Hey what is up YouTube, my name is Martin Turum, you're watching History Nerds and today we'll be talking about the real history of Bjorn Arendside's ventures in the Mediterranean, the story that inspired Bjorn Arendside's travels in History Channel's show Vikings. So let's get started. <laughs> Now, quick disclaimer, I've been a fan of the show for a very long time and although this one thing bothers me quite a lot, I still enjoy watching the TV series. Vikings is known for making compromises with history when it comes to creating a narrative and there are many videos out there that explain historical inaccuracies of the show. I might make a separate one about just that, but the inaccuracy that bothers me the most is the story of Bjorn Ironside's travels into the Mediterranean. To be honest, the tale from sagas and written works from the time are so incredibly interesting and exciting, I think the writers of the show really blew it with this one. So, in this video I'll be going through Björn's journey from the shores of the north to the warmth of Italy. Now to tell this story, it would be impossible not to include Harsten, the chieftain who after these raids would prove a formidable opponent against none other than Alfred the Great. The connection between Harsten and Björn is uncertain, some say he was Björn's guardian at some point, others say they grew up together. Nonetheless, we can be certain that the two travelled south together in one large fleet. It was almost inevitable that the Vikings eventually would look further south, after establishing themselves permanently on the Loire River. This is where what is referred to as the greatest of all Vikings expeditions drew their inspiration, the Great Raid of Harsten and Bjorn Ironside. The raiding began in the year 859 when Bjorn and Harsten left their Loire base with a supposed fleet of 62 ships. They travelled south and began raiding along the coast of Galicia and Austrias. However, because of the heavy resistance in these parts of the land, the fleet decided to travel further and instead pillage the Emirates west coast. According to several ancient sources, they had more success there. A coast guard had managed to stop two long ships who were travelling ahead of the rest of the fleet and the ships were already full of captives, provisions and treasures. Now the fleet did take a heavy hit by the mouth of the river Guadalacavir, where there is a big chance they were planning to sack Seville for a second time after another fleet had already done so in the city in AD 844. This did not go to plan when they were confronted by a large Moorish fleet, which ended with the Vikings fleeing the place after several of their ships had been burned. They continued their way south and managed to sack the town of Alegesiras, not far from Gibraltar, after taking it by surprise. They also burnt the main mosque of the town. Then they travelled south through the Straits of Gibraltar and just like that they were in the Mediterranean. It must be noted that even though the Vikings had never been to these parts of the world, the area was no stranger to piracy. The Frankish shores were often looted by both Arab and Moorish pirates, them having their base in the north of Africa. Harsten and Björn first landed on those shores of the African coast and the locals resisted only for a little while before running, leaving the Vikings free to plunder. They also captured black Africans who they refer to as Blormen or Blue Men, who themselves most likely had been brought to the north of Africa by the Arabs. They then turned back to Spain and continued on down the Mediterranean coast, plundering villages and cities on the coast of Morocco, sacking Narbonne and overwintering in Camarouge in the river Rhone. After the winter, they went up the river and sacked Nîmes, Arlé and Valence. After being defeated in one single battle, they returned to the open seas and set sail towards Rome. It is the Norman monk Dudo of St. Quintin that tells us of Björn and Harsten's attack on what they believed to be the great city of Rome. It is a colourful account, and although there probably is a great deal of historical background to the story, most of the tale should be looked upon as mere legend. However, why ruin a perfectly interesting story? 
For the story goes as follows. Björn and Hassan reached the shores of the little city of Luni and supposedly mistook it for Rome. Despite having prospered under Roman rule, it was in the 9th century nothing but a village and it is hard to imagine anyone managing to think it is Rome. Especially since Rome was supposedly the greatest city in the world and the Vikings had already visited much bigger villages and towns and cities before Luni. Now the story then continues to say that Hurston made up a plan to lure himself and the fleet into the city without breaching its walls by force. Viking emissaries walked up to the gates and told them they were exiles, that they needed provisions and a way to shelter their sick chieftain. Then they returned a second time and told the villagers that their chieftain, being Hurston, had died and they asked if they could enter the city and give their chieftain a true Christian burial. The townspeople agreed, and a procession of Vikings followed the coffin to the grave. But Harston was still alive, as he pushed the lid off the coffin, jumped up and killed the city's bishop. The Vikings then sacked the city, and when they were told that they had not taken Rome after all but Luni, Harston was so disappointed, he had the whole male part of the population in the city massacred. The fleet then continued their journey moving towards the mouth of the river Arno before sacking Pisa and then a hill town, Fisola, above Florence. Then they disappear, probably wintering somewhere. According to some Arabic and Spanish sources, there were Vikings who raided Greece and Alexandria and Egypt, and if that is true, there is a big possibility it was Björn's and Harsten's fleet. The crew resurfaces in 861 as they pass through the Gibraltar Straits on their way home. However, the Moorish fleet was ready and waiting for them, and out of the 61 ships who left for the south in 859, only 20 escaped the Moorish ambush in 861. Despite this, the fleet continued to raid cities and towns on their way home, such as the small Christian kingdom of Navarre, where they sacked Pamplona. Somehow, they managed to capture the king of Navarre, Garcia I, and had him ransomed for 70,000 gold dinars. That is about 308 kilograms of gold. Those who survived the venture returned to the Loire in 862 and all of them had grown very rich. Björn returned home to Denmark, although whether he survived the journey home or died in Frisia after a shipwreck is uncertain. Hassan stayed on the Loire for a while, but had an entire career of fighting King Alfred the Great ahead of him. And that is the real history behind Björn Ironside's Mediterranean adventure. Much of the information in this video has come from John Haywood's book Northman. If you want to learn more about the Vikings, I highly suggest you pick that book up. Nonetheless, thank you for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, comment if you have any questions or suggestions, and subscribe if you haven't already. My name is Martin Turum, this is History Nerds, and I'll see you next time.